All right, guys, how y'all doing today? Nick the Nutter Buster. Today, we're going to be talking about the tree hopper recon sling. Um, I'm kind of late to the party and simultaneously early to the party when it comes to what they call sling style saddles or two panel saddles. You'll hear them called sometimes. Uh, basically, it's just a tree saddle that is modeled more after. Uh, the original Anderson tree sling as opposed to something like the trophy line arrow hunter vein a saddle uh, Kind of a more conventional saddle Such as this in a conventional saddle. You'll see you have some black webbing up here at the top and then at the bottom And you just have a big loop right if you look at your lineman's loops Which are the big loops out to the side with the red trim on them. You just have a loop with some fabric in the middle of it That's all a saddle is um, and all the manufacturers have put a lot of work and a lot of time and a lot of effort into trying to see how you can cut that fabric and shape it and make pockets and gussets and they put adjuster straps on the bottom of it right so that you can shorten that up put more pressure on it um, people have girth hitched their lineman's belt uh, or I'm sorry they've girth hitched their bridge to the bridge loops to try to change whether you're pulling more on the top one or you're pulling more on the bottom one to change the pressure. Uh, tethered, when they came out with the Phantom Saddle, they had whatever the little balls were that were sewn in there. I haven't kept up with all the terminology. I'm kind of turning into a dinosaur on, in the saddle hunting world. Um, but they've done all that to adjust and, and figure out a problem, right? And the problem is, when you put the saddle on, and you hop up in a tree, right? All right, and you lean back in it. It's comfortable, all right? It's really not bad at all. But as you sit, what happens in a conventional style saddle, and I'd actually forgotten how comfortable this kite was. This is not a, the kite is an awesome saddle. I still recommend it very much. But when you sit in this all day, this this fabric stretches. Yeah, it just, just y'all take this in, right? This is the only channel where you can get away with watching this and it's not weird. Um, <laughs> so, um, this material stretches, all right, whether it's mesh, cordura, fleece, whatever, Kevlar, this is going to stretch, all right. This black webbing, this two inch webbing that's rated for six, eight thousand pounds, it's not going to stretch. So, what you run into is after a full day in the saddle and this stretches, you're going to start getting that digging into you. And you can move it a little bit, you can adjust your straps. You know your, your adjustment straps on there you can adjust that you can move your tether up and down you can try to lean uh, and leaning will help some standing on a platform will help right but then it starts to transfer all that pressure right there all right right there in, in my love handles you'll start to get pressure right there and and after time there's only, only so many places you can move that strap before it eventually it starts hurting that's why saddles have all these different adjustments to try to correct that. They'll try to, you know, girth hitch instead of the carabiner sitting here, they'll try to move it here or down here. All these different things to kind of change the pitch of the saddle, so to speak. Um, so what a sling style saddle does, and they've kind of seen a bit of a renaissance and on two different fronts, all right? So first, everybody's seen Tethered's marketing. If you haven't, you live in a hole. Um, John Eberhardt has the Eberhardt signature saddle that he's moving through tethered. John Eberhardt hunted out of original Anderson for decades. Um, they partnered with him. They're bringing that back out. All right, so that's step one. Uh, the other thing that helped bring them about is I actually got to play a small part on this is a couple years ago at Saddle Palooza. I brought one and several guys saw it, liked it. Somebody purchased mine from me. Um, and you started seeing DIY versions pop up on the thread, and all that is due to a forum member who is into old gear. Me and him made buddies, and uh, he kind of showed me his and how he had modified it, and I liked it, I got it, and my thoughts were it was super, super comfortable compared to something like this. It was more comfortable than this. This is not bad, but this, for me, was better because when you sit in a sling because that's what they call them now kids kids call these slings just so that you're hip with that that jive or they call them two panel saddles 
when you sit in this, you have two panels. You have two times the webbing. You don't have any fabric to stretch. So, it's more comfortable. When you get set up in this, when you grab that top paddle, panel and you separate it, it helps if you actually connect it to the right loop. But you can spread those two panels. And you see, I can spread this one way up here where it's cradling the small of my back and this one's under my legs. Or I can go through here kind of have them where they overlap a little bit, right? Which is pretty comfortable. Um, when you sit in this, that two inch webbing will not stretch and it actually equalizes through where your bridge plates are. You don't really have soft bridge loops on these style saddles. You have a hard plate or a D-ring. They can equalize. So however you sit in a saddle, like I've talked about usually, I like kind of a lower tether and I'll sit with a tight low tether and kind of have my thighs at a 45 and I'm trying to sit straight up, right? Uh, but if you sit lower, you know, you prefer to have your knees more like that when you sit, longer tether, higher tether, you sit lower, you can move this and give yourself more of that kind of cupping effect that people talk about um, in a conventional saddle. So this is a big advantage. They're super strong. You got four strands of six to 8,000 test, test flat webbing holding you up in the air. Uh, they're very streamlined and minimalistic. They don't have to have as much material on them. Um, it's an awesome saddle, but the new ones come with some features that the original Anderson does not. They come with some improvements. And the reason that I brought mine to Saddle Palooza and sold it was because while it was very, very comfortable, it was a pain to climb with compared to modern saddles because you didn't have any bridge loops. Um, you had to figure out your own tether and bridge system because the original had this big long strap that threw around the tree and to adjust the length you were supposed to wrap it around the tree more. Um, it had some stuff that was just lacking on it, needed to be modernized, but what happened, I kind of dropped the ball on it. I lost interest, I got a kite, I kind of moved on. I'm like, well, you know, maybe that'll get better in the future. Uh, my buddy um, and a couple of other guys on the forum, they reached out to Mark at Treehopper. Um, if you watch my channel, you know I'm a big fan of Mark, big fan of his easy cut drill that he makes. They're not easy cut. Tree hopper hand drill? There's so many names out there now, I can't remember. He makes the tree hopper mini hand drill as a competitor to the easy cut, and it's a lot better. Um, I've got several videos on, on the full size and the mini and the bolt system that I use. Awesome gear. He also brought back the tree suit platform, which I did a review on and that I was a huge fan of. So Mark is a, is a very smart guy. He's a very humble guy. And he has no problem working with people and asking you what you want. Um, and if there's no need to reinvent the wheel, don't reinvent the wheel. Or if you can just, you know, add some chrome to it and make it a little bit better, he'll do that too. And that's kind of what he did here. He just made some improvements to the Anderson. So the original uh, recon sling was based off of uh, my buddy actually sent Mark his Anderson. Um, to kind of look at and, and dissect and take apart and, and they talked about some modifications and the big thing that they did first and foremost is the recon sling unlike the anderson you have your lineman's loops right and that's one inch tubular webbing super strong stuff it's sewed on in a way that it's stitched all the way around um that kind of serves as your molly webbing too because it's a law now you can't make a saddle that doesn't have molly webbing that's a joke don't sue me um <laughs> I'm not a big Molly webbing guy, but all of them have to have it now. That's just what the market demands. Um, he did that. He kind of changed. Used to, you kind of had, it was it was like a, um, it was just a chain link really on the Anderson. It was just a piece of chain, steel chain, that the webbing, the two pieces of webbing panel fed through. And there was no real good way to do your loops. So what he did is he came up with these plates and he's got two different versions of the plates one uh, has the hole in the middle of it that's called the amsteel model and so with that you can go ahead and splice your amsteel or if you're using like a small diameter oplux rope or something like that you can thread it through there for that bridge or if you're doing like me you're using a webbing bridge but you're 
using a carabiner. Um, you can go that route. Sorry, I kind of lost my chain of thought. I had the neighborhood kid was standing at my gate. He was apparently very interested um, in, in my saddle setup. He'd been watching me swing on the tree and everything. And then he come up to me. He's like, you got a YouTube channel? I'm like, yeah, yes, sir. I got a YouTube channel. He's like, man, that's awesome. And he said, pointed to my stuff. He's like, is that your merch? And I'm like, no, but it's made by Hangtime Apparel. And you can get some at hangtime.com. Uh, now, check out, check out Jeff. He's a good guy. He's a moderator. If you want to support the saddle hunting community, buy a shirt from him. He makes good stuff. He makes hats. He makes this super sexy. The state logos. Nutter Buster's idea. Don't let him tell you otherwise. Um, <laughs> so anyway, um, get back on track. We're going to have to put that edit in there. But So he makes the rope plate, uh, but then he also makes a webbing plate so that you have a place to thread tubular webbing um, and you can adjust the length on it and if you order it with the tubular webbing I think he actually sends you your bridge if you do am steel you gotta do that yourself he's not splicing am steel but uh, the bridges are nice that's nice something that the Anderson didn't have was leg loops if you watch the channel you know that I have zero need for leg loops um, because I'm not I just I don't SRT DRT I don't climb with aiders or any of that stuff Nutter Buster likes a foot on something firm every step he takes um, and I'm not that concerned I keep a waist belt on and I'm just not that concerned about sliding out of my saddle but if you're new or if you use any of those climbing methods that I mentioned put the leg loops on there right you get them with the saddle 150 bucks and you're getting what's cool is this saddle is made in the USA it's made by a company that makes like parachute rigging and stuff like that harnesses um, so this is stitched up stateside for 150 bucks. It's one of the cheapest saddles you can get. It's one of the lightest saddles you can get. It's, you know, it wads up to next to nothing, right? I mean, you can hide it under that hat. So it's, a, it's an excellent saddle. The craftsmanship to it is excellent. The features that he put on it kind of modernized the Anderson. And that's really all that it needed. It didn't need, you don't need anything else. Those four pieces of webbing provide all the support that you need because they don't flex. And you can move them, overlap them a little bit if you want to. That's pretty comfortable. Just overlap them, have three pieces. You can move them up and down. So no need for panels or, you know, gussets or adjusters or anything like that you have a lot of adjustment built in um the buckle on them uh is based off of like the buckles that you see a lot on some of the rock climbing harnesses it's very light it's very strong um it keeps costs down because i think he gets them made himself uh, but i did go ahead on mine i'm a big fan of the austria alpen buckles and so i just went ahead and uh i got basically just two pieces of the bridge or of the waist belt from him and just went ahead and I just kind of got the no so no sue no no stitchy no stitchy stitchy uh buckle so that I could put that on there just to make it a little easier to put on and off but um big big improvement I think over some of the other designs very simple very streamlined very strong um you know, John Eberhardt's been sitting in that style for a very long time. Um, I don't have a lot of experience with the ESS. I've just looked at pictures of it. I've never actually held one in my hand. Um, my thoughts on it are, I don't know why they made the D-ring so big. And any time that you have leg loops with G-hooks, why have them? Um, you can actually see in the video of Eberhardt, no bad intentions towards him, no shame, no nothing. But he demonstrates my problem with G-hooks on leg loops which is that he only halfway clips into it. So there's almost zero strength. You could just bop that right on off of there and then you don't have leg loops and what's the point of having to deal with them? You know, if they're just gonna come off like that. Um, but these, they sit very close to your body. You'll notice I usually wear this saddle, I usually hire, I've been hog hunting out of it some. And it's very nice because you, know, you just put it on and it doesn't do that thing like a uh, a kite when you put it on or a kestrel or any saddle saddle can be bad. You've got all that loose baggy material. And it just kind of gives you that diaper feel, right? Especially like the trophy lines. They're good saddles, but they're bad about that. They're just a lot of fabric. This 
more like a kidney belt that you put on. Um, very, very comfortable. Comfortable to wear. You wear it, you can wear it up high like that, right? And you could throw a jacket on over it. Nobody'd ever know you were saddle hunting. And you could go and you could get your tree hopper drilling your bolts and you could put that in just cargo pockets and jacket pockets and everything and you could walk in like that and nobody would know that you had it. Something else I like about it is I had been playing with the idea of a kidney belt saddle. Uh, just a back harness because when you're hunting out of a big platform like the ambush or the trophy line mission, those are both getting pretty popular and they have their, their benefits. But with this, you can actually set, you can see that's about a waist high tether that I'm working with. You can hub all the way up. And then you basically, you just have a big sling that you're leaning against. And that's, that's actually quite comfortable as well. You don't need anything at all. None of it's under my butt. It's all in the small of my back. If you got back issues, um, I imagine that would be super, super comfortable. And then if you get tired of it, you can always bring it down under your butt. So, um, very versatile. If you're sitting, right, if you're leaning, a lot, of, a lot more of your weight's going towards your feet. And you just need something to lean against and stay steady. So you can wear that thing up kind of as a kidney belt, it's very comfortable. If you sit, you have a little bit more weight getting transferred to your butt and into the saddle. And in that case, you have the two panels, two times the panels, two times the goodness, patented trademark I'm working on. Uh, you know, you can spread that out versus, like I said, on a, on a conventional single panel saddle, everything eventually, if you sit long enough, it goes to that webbing and that webbing because whatever you put in the middle, that just stretches. So check them out. Like I said, um, I think I mentioned these are made stateside, um, made in the good old US of A for 150 bucks. Very affordable. Um, and you can also tree tree hopper. Uh, I think it's treehopperllc.com. I'll put a link below, but it, it could very well be your one stop shop for saddle hunting stuff. They sell the tree suit platform, which I've done a review on. They sell the tree hopper drill and bolt system, which I've done a review on. That's pretty much the lightest, most compact way that you can get up and down a tree, and it's super, super safe. No aiders, solid something under your feet the whole way up. Um, you know, he sells lineman's belts, he sells pruners, he sells lots of other stuff. Um, he's a good guy. He's a small business. He's based out of Florida, so he's local. He's a he's a deep south redneck like myself um but yeah i've been very very impressed with that for 150 bucks and it's using the design that people have been using for decades this is kind of the og uh saddle before trophy line before i think before the greens i may have my timeline mixed up the greens may have come out a few years before this the old leather greens um that evolved into trophy line but this has been out for a long time. Eberhardt has been sitting in one for a long time. I first got interested in it because I noticed that even though he would advertise for other people, whoever was kind of in business at the time, he would, you know, kind of throw them out there, try to help them do some business. Um, Trophy Line, Arrow Hunter, Tethered, he's been affiliated with all of those in some way, used their saddles, promoted them, but he always stayed with that old Anderson. Um, and now you basically, you have two different modernized Andersons. Um, this one, I just think you have some more streamlined, you know, bridge plates. Um, the leg loops are modular. They only use the G-hooks. And, you know, USA made for the, the guys who care about that. I've always, I'm not, I don't get hung up on stuff like that a whole lot. Because, um, you know, heck, probably everything that I'm wearing and the phone that I'm recording on and everything, my cars, they're all made overseas. But um, it's nice to get American made when you can, you know, afford it when it's cheaper to buy the American made product. Do the you know, do the patriotic thing, I guess. I don't know. The big thing for me is just the loops and and Mark's a good guy. Mark really listens and takes feedback well. When I mentioned that I didn't like his buckle and I preferred that one, um, he immediately demanded a picture and a link and he ordered some of them so that he could play with them. Uh and see if he could, you know, if there was enough people that was interested in them, he'd make that an option. So that's uh I like that. Those smaller businesses, Eastern Woods Outdoors, Mark over at Tree Hopper, um, 
you know they're very they're very responsive to stuff and as far as i know if you're just kind of getting into the saddle thing this year uh mark said he had plenty of these he got this one to me in four or five days i ordered it back in august i think july uh to play with and to start doing some early hog hunting with and uh i love it you also don't have to worry about your butt sweating right cordera sweaty butt no bueno in the deep south so um, but yeah, I really think I'm digging this. I think especially combined with that, that long wolf ambush. Um, I think that's going to make for some very comfortable all day sits. You got the ability to take a little pressure off of your feet. Um, you got the ability to take a little pressure off your butt. And we're going to be talking in the next video. When I ordered this, um, he sent it to me and he said, Hey, I noticed I just sent an order to your house. Like I didn't catch it at first, but we got to talking and catching up. And he said, I got something else I'm going to send you. And he said, this ain't really hit the market yet. But uh, I want to I want to send you something and see what you think about it. And I've been using it and I've been really impressed with it. So for you guys who watched all the way to the end of this long video, I got something in the next video that you're probably going to like. So y'all stay tuned and we'll check it out. Thanks for watching.